And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friend. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of the Golden Bracelet of Amoniris. There doesn't seem... Over there, next to the sarcophagus. It's one of the workers. It shouldn't be in here. Something's happened to him. Here, you, get up. Get out of here. Just a minute. What are you feeling his pulse for? He's dead. What? He's dead. And look, around his wrist. That's the snake bracelet the mummy wore. There's a strange mark on his wrist. Like the fang marks of a snake. The Hall of Fantasy will present the golden bracelet of Amoniris in just a moment. And now for our story, entitled, The Golden Bracelet of Amoniris. I had gone over to Egypt with Dr. Jason Freeman's archaeological group to discover, if possible, the tomb of the pharaoh Amoatan. Amoatan had been one of the greatest rulers of the Third Dynasty. Other parties before ours had covered every inch of ground in the Valley of Kings, only to meet with failure. Dr. Freeman believed the lost tomb was several miles away from the valley, and accordingly, our base of operations was set up some 20 miles north of the Valley of Kings. It was about midday, almost a month after we had begun excavating. Oh. Oh, it's a Ah, what I wouldn't give to be in a nice air-conditioned room in Cairo. I should imagine you'd be enjoying every minute of this, Charles. I can enjoy it and still be uncomfortable, Dr. Freeman. Yes, I suppose so. We don't seem to have had much luck so far. But we will. I'm sure of it. One of the men is calling to us. Perhaps he found something. Well, let's see. You all right? Uh, we're coming. Where's Professor Porter? Uh, there he is over there. He's coming too. Yeah, how about that? We find tomb. What? We find tomb. Look. Here. Let me see. Well? He's right. And we're in luck. The sea was intact. What is it? What's happened? We were in luck when we started to dig here, Porter. We found the tomb. And the seal on the door? It's intact. That means grave robbers didn't break in. The tomb is just as it was left centuries ago. Is it Amoatan's tomb? We don't know yet. We won't know till we get inside. There's no marking out here by the door. Maybe the sand is covering it. What are we going to do? We'll clear this area by the doorway. Then we'll use dynamite to blast it down. Men back far enough? There isn't anyone except us within 200 yards of that door. Good. The wire's attached, Porter? Yes. Then set it off. You've done it! Yes, a good clean job, Porter. When do we go in? You've forgotten about the heat, eh, Charles? You're caught up in the excitement of discovery. Well, it's to be expected. Yes, but when do we go in? In about two hours. We'll give the air a chance to get in there and replace that which is present now. I don't want to take any chances, one of us being overcome by the stale oxygen in there. Jason. Yes, Porter? It's strange, but I have the feeling that we shouldn't go inside that tomb. Well, I don't know. I must be reading too many murder stories in my spare time. Everything inside that tomb is dead. Uh, of course, nothing can hurt us. Are you ready? Yes. You've told the men to stay back at the camp. Yes. All right, then. Let's go. It's a good thing we waited. It still smells stale. Musty in here. Seems strange that there was no inscription on the door outside the tomb. Nor is there any in this passageway. The burial chamber will let us know whose tomb this is. Uh, shine your lights up ahead. I think we're coming to it. Yes, yes we are. Now, 
We'll find out if we've discovered the tomb of Amalatan. There's an inscription over there. Shine your lights over there. See if you can make it out, Porter. It's not the tomb of Amalatan, Jason. It's the tomb of Amoniris. Amoniris? Yeah. The legendary queen of the third dynasty. It's truly a great discovery. Then you're not disappointed. Of course not, Charles. We've come across something the world thought was lost forever. Amoniris, the greatest of the queens of Egypt. Even in the most complete histories of Egypt, only vague references are made to her name. But we were sure she existed. And this will prove it. Who was she? Queen of Egypt, master of men, and one of the cruelest rulers of the ancient world. To disobey her slightest wish meant death to the one who incurred her wrath. Let's see if we can open the sarcophagus. This burial chamber is magnificently preserved. I only hope that the mummy of Amoniris will be in the same condition. There's an inscription on the side of the sarcophagus, Jason. What does it say? Let me see. Ah, whomsoever violates the resting place of the queen and steals her wealth from her shall die the death she reserved for him. Hmm. Nice and friendly. We went to a great deal of trouble to frighten the grave robbers away. Inscriptions like that one appealing to the superstitious natures of their people. They hoped it would save their tombs from being ransacked. For the ancient Egyptians believed that they needed their wealth and possessions after death. Well, it certainly made me think for a minute. Oh, there's nothing to it. Isn't that right, boy? Uh, no, no, there's nothing to it. No, no. Let's see if we can't roll the top of this sarcophagus off. The three of us together. Right. All right. All together now. A little more. That does it. Shall die the death. Yes. There she is. Wrapped in mummy cloth. And her head covered by a gold mask. The mummy of Amoniris. Whosoever violates my tomb shall die. Listen. What's the matter, Father? Didn't you hear it? Hear what? The voice. Oh, you're imagining things, Ford. No, I'm not. I heard something, I tell you. A woman's voice saying, Whosoever violates my tomb shall die. Return to the Hall of Fantasy in the tale of the Golden Bracelet of Amoniris in just a moment. Back now to the Hall of Fantasy in the tale of the Golden Bracelet of Amoniris. Both Freeman and I stared at Dr. Porter in amazement. He had backed away from the sarcophagus and stood staring down at the still figure of Amoniris in horror. Then he looked apprehensively around the burial chamber as if searching for someone. What's the matter with you, Porter? I tell you, I heard something. Well, I thought I heard something, too, like an animal howling. And that's all? Yeah, that's all. Well, I heard the animal, too. But I didn't hear any voice, Porter. Maybe you imagined you heard it. It's possible that I imagined it, but it was so real, as if she were standing right beside me. Stop. Looking around the burial chamber, there's no one else in here. Are you sure? Of course we are. You know, you don't look at all well, Porter. Maybe you'd better go outside and get some air. No. No, I'll stay here with you. Then forget about what you thought you heard. Sound like a superstitious fool. I'm sorry, but... Forget it. What do you want me to do? We're going to unwrap the mummy. See what jewels and articles of value it has in its person. You've done this before, Porter. I think you should take charge of the job. That's it. That's the last of it. What a remarkable state of preservation she's in. Look, on her left wrist. That's a gold snake bracelet. Yes, I noticed it before. Beautiful workmanship. It looks almost as if it were alive. But it's not. It's getting late. We better go back to camp now. We can catalog the contents of the burial chamber tomorrow. It moved. What moved? The snake bracelet. It moved. Nothing's moved, Porter, except your imagination. You don't stop it. 
I'm going to recommend that you be sent back to the States. I'm sorry, Jason. I, I don't know what's the matter with me. I, I thought it moved. You're not a superstitious man, Porter. Now, that's one of the reasons I wanted you with me in this expedition. But you're sounding like a frightened fool. I'll forget this nonsense once and for all. We'll go back to camp, eat, and then get a good night's sleep. I'm sure that's all you'll need to make you forget about your strange notions. What time is it? Almost 10.30. Well, we'd better turn in if we're going to get that good night's sleep you were talking about. I don't feel like sleeping. Oh, you will once you lie down. You'd better go to your tent, Porter. Hmm. Yes, I suppose you're right. Well, good night. I'm worried about him, Charles. Oh, he's just tired, Jason. He'll be all right in the morning. Oh, I hope so. All this nonsense about a voice and... Then saying you saw the snake bracelet move. You know, you, you'd think something was happening to his mind. Uh, that jackal out there. I hope it finds something to eat and stops howling. Ever since we made camp here, at night it's been out there. As if it were waiting for something. Oh, you get used to it after a while. I... I heard that cry while we were in the tomb today. I heard something myself. But it... Could have been the wind rushing through the passageways. You sound as if you're afraid. Oh, I don't think I am. <laughs> That's what the ravings of an upset mind can do. If Porter isn't better in the morning, I will send him back. Well, you know, while we were in there today, I could almost believe that he had heard something. Now, don't tell me you're starting to believe it. What was that? I don't know. It sounded like a scream. That's what I think it was. I heard a scream. Yes. So did we. It came from the tomb. Are you sure? Yes. My tent is at least a hundred yards closer to the tomb than you are. I heard it quite clearly. Maybe we better take a look, eh? Get your flashlights. One of the workers might have gone in there and hurt himself. Let's see what's happened. Anyone in here? Shine your lights around. Well, that doesn't seem... Over there. Next to the sarcophagus. It's one of the workers. He shouldn't be in here. Something's happened to him. Here, you. Get up. Get out of here. Just a minute. What are you feeling his pulse for? He's dead. What? He's dead. And look. Around his wrist. That's the snake bracelet the mummy wore. There's a strange mark on his wrist, like the fang marks of a snake. Let me see. Those are fang marks. I... What's, what's wrong? I felt it move. I felt it move. What move? The snake bracelet. You're insane. No, Jason. It did slip down his wrist a little. And now, it's on the floor. There's nothing to be afraid of, Porter. It's just a gold bracelet. An inanimate object that can harm no one. In the days that followed, we cataloged all the contents of the tomb. It was an exceptionally rich store of treasures that had been buried there with the Queen... Many of the objects we left with the Egyptian Department of Antiquities. But we were allowed to bring the mummy of Queen Amoniris and a small part of the jewelry and other articles back to America with us. Among them was the snake bracelet. About a month after our return, Jason Freeman invited Dr. Porter and me over to his house one evening. Gentlemen, my wife, Laura. How do you do? A pleasure, Mr. Jason. Freeman. spoken of you often. And he's spoken of both of you off and off, sir, right? I feel as though I know you already. I, uh, I see you're wearing the gold bracelet we found in the tomb. Yes, sir. A gift from my husband. The other things he presented to the museum. Uh, did he tell you yes. about... Yes, yes. He, he mentioned that it was found on the wrist of a dead man. Porter seems to believe that, uh... uh excuse me. Hello? Yes. This is Jason Freeman. What's that? 
Well, it's not possible. I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for letting me know. Goodbye. Who was it, dear? Dr. Stevens. The curator of the museum. Anything wrong, Jason? Yes. He said the mummy of Amon Iris is missing from its glass case. The case is completely shattered, but the mummy is gone. Well, who would want to see it? said the watchman told him he saw something walking across the grass outside the museum. What do you mean? He said it was the mummy he saw. You are listening to the tale of The Golden Bracelet of Amon Iris on this week's journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. We'll return to our story in just a moment. And now, back to our story entitled, The Golden Bracelet of Amon Iris. Jason Freeman had just received a telephone call from Stevens, the curator of the museum. From him, he learned that the glass case in which the mummy of Amon Iris had been placed had been destroyed and the mummy was gone. Are you serious, Jason? Quite serious, my dear. Stevens said the night watchman had seen the mummy walking. That's absurd. No, 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 not necessarily. Since I've been back, I've tried to learn everything I could about Amon Iris. Uh, the bracelet you're wearing, Mrs. Freeman, has a definite connection with her. What are you talking about, Porter? Well, look, Amon Iris had that snake bracelet especially made for her. Once she came into possession of it, she built her whole life around it. She believed that if the bracelet was taken from her, it would result in her death. And so she guarded it jealously. But one night, as she lay sleeping, it was stolen from her wrist. And she awoke to find it gone. She learned that one of the high priests had it in his possession. And so she went to him and demanded it. She went alone. When she walked into the trap the priests had laid, they killed her. I know that story too, Porter. That's only one of the legends that surround Amonirus. That's right, Jason, only one. But I'm not through telling you about her yet. Oh, why don't you forget about her, Professor? Because it may mean our deaths if I do. I think your mind's going back on you, Porter. I don't care what you think. I'm trying to help you, and I think you should listen. And I think that you... Oh, now, Jason, let him talk. According to the legend surrounding her, it is said that if the bracelet is removed from her wrist, Amoniris will wake from her long sleep to recover the bracelet. And with her, she will bring death. I know that story too, Andrew. And it's all Tommy, right? I don't think it is, Jason. I think it's true. Then I think you're as stupid as the story you're telling. Jason. I'm sorry, my dear. The mummy is gone, Jason. Well, someone could have taken it. Not according to the night watchman. And he could have been drinking. He saw something, Jason. Something out on the lawn in front of the museum. I'm going to take this thing off. What's the matter with you? All of you. This is the 20th century, not the Dark Ages. How far is the museum from here? About half a mile. And it shouldn't be too long. What do you mean? The mummy should be here soon. Listen. Dog. Only a dog. I'm not so sure. It could be the cry of a jackal. Oh. I refuse to stay in here and listen to such stupid nonsense. I'm going out for a walk. Uh, Jason, don't go out there. I'm not going to stay here and listen to a lot of foolishness. Jason! Let him go. Oh, I'm sorry that I made your husband angry, Mrs. Freeman. It's just that I believe that we never should have entered the tomb of Amoniris. Andrew. Yes? Mrs. Freeman set the snake bracelet down on the coffee table. Now, no one has touched it since. Do you see what I see? It's moved. Oh, that's no dog out there. What are we going to do? I think that we should... That's Jason. We better see what happened. He shouldn't have gone out there. Let me in. Let me in. Open the door, Porter. It's out there. What's out there? The mummy. I saw it. Then... Then the story is true. I owe you an apology, Porter. I'm sorry. What are we going to do? It must be destroyed. But how? That thing from the past is 5,000 years old and still lives. <laughs> It's getting closer to us. We have to think of something. It's trying to break down the door. Get back! Do you have a gun in the house? No. Any other weapon? Nothing at all. 
And besides, what good would bullets do against it? Uh, that door won't hold up much longer. We have to think of something. Fire. What's that? The way to destroy it. Fire. Jason, do you have any kerosene, any turpentine, anything flammable around the house? Not that I know of. Oh, I, I have some cleaning fluid in the kitchen. Get it, and some old rags that we can soak with it. I'll be right back. Now, look. When it breaks in, mm-hmm. it'll probably head first for the bracelet and then for us. Yes. Now, we'll soak the rags in the cleaning fluid, and when it gets close enough to us, we'll light them and throw them at the mummy. It's been kept dry through all these centuries. It should burn like a torch. The next time, the door will break in. We must be absolutely certain that the burning rags fall on the mummy. What about the house? What do you want to save? Your house or your life? Here it is. Good. Now, pour the cleaning fluid over these rags. Here, I'll do it. Make sure the rags are completely soaked with the fluid. Don't worry, I will. Ah! It's there, steady in the doorway. Seize the bracelet. Remember, when it picks up the bracelet, we throw the burning rags at it. That's all the cleaning fluid. It's got the bracelet. All right, light the rags. Right. All right, hurry. It's starting for us. All right, throw the rags. That's it. It's starting to burn. But it hasn't stopped. Back away, back away. Are you sure the fire's completely out? Yes. I was afraid that we'd never be able to stop it. So was I. Yes. But we did stop. And the mummy is destroyed. Well, there's nothing left but ashes. And the bracelet. Yes. And the bracelet. Only the flames melted it down. So that it's lost all shape and form. That's all there is left of... The Golden Bracelet of Ammoniris. So runs tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental.